on the 23rd of September 2019 at 0529 p.m. President Halainde Hijilema, while in the opposition, as President of the United Party for National Development, tweeted, and I quote, the office of the president must cut out foreign trips as the economy is in distress. President Akainde Ichilema, president of the Republic of Zambia now, while in opposition, as leader of the largest opposition in Zambia, tweeted, and I quote, the office of the president must cut out foreign trips as the economy is in distress. He went on to say, the rise in the fuel prices is yet another example of why hostility measures must be seriously implemented to keep the economy under control. My dear brother, President Againde Ichirem, what has changed? What has changed today, my dear brother? The factors then are still the factors now. One, our economy is still under stress. Secondly, the price of fuel, which you talked about in this tweet, is still very high. And that's the more reason why hostility measures must be observed even today. Mr. President, you have taken 30 international trips in one year, seven months of your leadership. In the last two weeks, you have, in the last two weeks, you would have taken three trips, foreign trips, together with the pending a trip to Senegal. Three trips in two weeks at the expense of the taxpayer. I remember very well you used to call President Hediga Chagwalungu that Kamwendo Munjila for taking so many international trips. What has changed today, my dear brother? Look, Zambians, like I said in my preamble, if we continue being in consistence, doing exactly the same things that we condemned when we are in the opposition, Zambians are going to lose confidence in politics. And once the Zambians lose confidence, there will be a lot of people not going out to vote. There will be apathy in short during elections. Because when we say something today, and when we are in power, we start doing exactly the opposite, or we start doing the things that we used to condemn. The UPND in opposition condemned not only President Lungu, they also condemned President Lupia Banda and said the foreign trips are necessary to some extent. And that is very true because I was Minister of Foreign Affairs in the first government of the Patriotic Front under President Michael Sata. President Michael Sata did not leave Zambia until after seven months. 
President Michael Sata did not leave Zambia. In short, he did not undertake any foreign trip until after seven months. And I remember very well, he called me and Dr. Guy Scott, and he said, and I caught, Wakambwiri. We have a lot of things to do in the country. We have a lot of repair to do to the country. We have a lot of problems here in the country. And if you are going to be writing to me that, Mr. President, there is this trip you have to go, there is this trip you have to go, I would rather find another Minister of Foreign Affairs. Because these international trips, some of them can be undertaken by you yourself as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Some can be taken by the Vice President. And others can be attended to by ambassadors and high commissioners in those respective countries where the meetings are being held. I will not leave the problems back home. I have just been elected. I need to settle down. And once I'm settled, I am satisfied that things are now moving. That is when I'll start undertaking foreign trips. In the meantime, in the meantime, you, Dr. Scott, and our ambassadors and high commissioners would do us a favor to attend these meetings. And this was only two months when we were in office and there was a trip to go and attend the Commonwealth meeting in Australia. I went with Dr. Guy Scott. Mr. Sata only undertook the first foreign trip seven months and we went to the Great Lakes Region Conference in Uganda. So you can see that Mr. Sata was very consistent with what he promised while in opposition. And I remember very well, he used to condemn President Lupia Banda for moving too much. And true to his word, it took him seven months. And most of the meetings, even after, he used to send either Dr. Scott, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, or indeed High Commissioners and Ambassadors. Our President, I think this is now becoming embarrassing. No matter how foreign affairs wants to sugarcoat the importance of these meetings, countrymen and women, not all meetings, I have been to those meetings. In fact, to tell you the truth, more often than not, age of states are represented by prime ministers and vice president most of the time, and indeed just ministers of foreign affairs. But it appears our president Every meeting, every invitation, he has to travel. This is at great cost to the treasury. He just went to Angola. From Angola, he proceeded to Dubai. From Dubai, tomorrow he's leaving for Senegal. Our Churchillam. But President Churchillam, to a papata. Flafine mo ale konde maba nen when you are in the opposition. Zambians are watching you. And those who are managing the president, please let's be truthful. You see, what destroys presidents is that they want to listen to their own words. I would advise my friends in the UPND to please advise the president correctly. 
I am my foreign trips ya chilamu. These uh, memorandum of understandings that are being signed all over have always been there. Even when I was Minister of Foreign Affairs, we were signing memorandum, memorandums. We didn't need the president to be there. In any case, presidents don't sign memorandums or memorandums of understanding. It is ministers. So the president Nashenko Kwenda. People are really suffering. But you are busy traveling all the time. Please delegate. When a minister travels, when a vice president travels, the cost is relatively much lower than the president. When the president travels, it is a very high cost to the treasury because of the security details, etc., etc. I cannot go into details. When I travel during my time, when I traveled as minister of foreign affairs, or any other minister, what we usually do is you use the vehicle for the ambassador to move around. But when the president moves, there must be proper transport arrangements made. In most cases, hired vehicles or hired motorcades. So please, my president, please be consistent. Live up to your promises. Like I said, it is becoming embarrassing. That fiance fin to for marriage that condemn. This is what happened. So now I'm papa to my president. Wa kwebe mfo ya kwa noko mutanj. Ero ule kwebe la postrate ni munonko. Stop these unnecessary foreign trips. That conference you are going to in Senegal is about agriculture. Send the minister of agriculture. Send the minister of foreign affairs and the minister of agriculture. They will represent you. On the other hand, you must also look at your health. You can't just be away from home all the time. You need to be home with your children and your family. You need to be home to provide a service to the people of Zambia. They are the ones who elected you to give them service. Not to try and impress the IMF. Not to try and impress the Americans or the Western world. Because this is now what it is amounting to. That you want every conference you go and attend and you go and speak so that you appear to be the most intelligent president in Africa or in the world. You are doing a disservice to the people of Zambia. You are doing a disservice to the people of Zambia. Mpombe Makufuri rarely moved out of Tanzania. Makufuri rarely traveled. But look at the development that he left in Tanzania. Look at his record of where he left Tanzania. You don't need to travel all the time in order to develop this country. That's a wrong notion, my president. That's a wrong notion. And please stop it. You see, Zambians are very patient. So the best you can do, avoid it, my brother. Avoid it. Try as much as possible to be around to attend to the issues in the country. Look at the mess we are in, in terms of load shedding. And your government has just said you cannot stop exports. You are being unfair to the Zambians. How can you allow Zambians to be load shaded for eight hours? And this thing you have brought of four hours in the morning, four hours in the evening, four hours at midnight, please. It's stressing Zambians. There is nothing that you have achieved by saying we are going to divide it into two. I mean, load shedding people twice in four hours, four hours. It's, 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 you can't do anything. 
by the time four hours is, is ending, you have not done anything. Power is gone. Why can't you just stop these exports? And by the way, the reason that you gave Mr. President is not convincing. In fact, it's a very laughable uh, reason for you not to stop exports. You said no, in case we start generating more power, if we terminate these contracts, we will not have where to sell our excess uh, electricity that will generate in future. Come on, my brother, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. And I know you can do better than that. But please, let's be consistent in what we do. Stop the exports. Look, this electricity is very, very, very important. Yesterday I was listening to the radio on Camnet TV where they reported deaths as a result of load shedding in hospitals as a result of load shedding four patients died in this hospital that was on the news because Bane, you cannot run this country like a business entity. And be careful, the Americans. <laughs> be careful with the way we want to associate with the Americans. Otherwise, you end up being used as a country. 